So these are the new Wahoo units, the Wahoo Bolt 3 and the Wahoo Roam 3, replacing the Wahoo Bolt V2 and the Wahoo Roam V2, all of which are joining the much larger beefcake of a bike computer, the Wahoo Ace that came out last fall. Now, essentially, the goal of all these three units is to be on the same platform. And we're seeing that here with the Bolt and the Roam now joining that same software platform and display and all the same technologies as the Ace. Uh, also, by the way, my wife has a super long workout to do and I want to record so she's just hanging out in the background there. Now what I'm doing in this video is to walk through all the newness on these units but this is definitely not an in-depth review that'll come a little bit later on this is just like a hands-on sort of thing based on the last weeks or so worth of riding. In addition to that Wahoo also announced their new Wahoo Tracker Radar uh, which is essentially just a back radar like combination but with USB-C unlike one of their competitors uh, and I've been riding with that as well and that'll be a separate video probably tomorrow or something like that explaining that whole thing. So that will just simply dive straight into it. The first thing to note is the core differences between these three units, the Ace, the Wahoo Roam V3, and the Bolt. I'm just going to call it the Roam and the Bolt from here on out, not V3, because that's just a whole lot of extra stuff. And by the way, the V3 part isn't there either. It's just simply three. So it used to be Bolt V2 and Roam V3, no more V, just just three. Got it? Good. So the big three differences between these units, aside from the size, of course, comes down to speaker, wind sensor, and touchscreen. Uh, so starting at the top here, the Ace has the wind sensor. That's that little bit on the front that you see right there uh, to detect the wind speed. Uh, and it has a touchscreen as well as a proper speaker. So speaker meaning that it can give spoken word directions like turn left, turn right, etc. Meanwhile, the Roam does not have that aero wind sensor at the front there, uh, but it does still have a touchscreen and it does still have the spoken word speaker. That means not only in addition to navigation, it can also do the bike bell, that ding ding bit there. Then stepping down one further, you've got the Bolt. Now the Bolt does get an increase in that same screen, but not a touch screen. It is button only operation, just like uh, the past Bolt was. It also does not get that wind sensor, aero sensor on the front and it does not get the proper speaker. It does have a beeper, so it can make little beeps and stuff like that uh, for turn alerts, but it does not actually have a speaker. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting or useful, just simply watch it all the way through. My wife has to sit here and listen to it all the way through, so you can basically do the same thing. It really does help out YouTube and the algorithm and this video quite a bit. So let's start off with the Roam and just simply stick up all the new features right there. I'm just going to run through them. This again will not be a complex video. First off, they've increased the screen size from 2.7 to 2.8 inch. They've increased the colors from 64 colors to 16 million colors. They've added that touchscreen and the speaker that I mentioned earlier on. And they've added with that those voice navigation prompts uh, as well as the bike bell. They've also added street names. That's something we saw come in on the Ace. So street names are now on the map. And then with that, they've added map layers. So you can turn on a lot of different components of the map. That includes the POI, so points of interest. That includes your custom waypoints, your street names, your summit segments, and your Strava segments. They've also added in activity profiles. These are effectively like doing a road profile, a mountain bike profile with different settings for that. Uh, in the past, Wahoo didn't actually have that. Uh, they've also added in a new sensor pairing dashboard. I like it. It's a very well done sensor dashboard. Makes it a little more clear as to what sensors you currently have paired and the settings for those sensors. Next up at the very top of the screen, you'll see the time of day as well as the battery status and the GPS status that is always there, sort of similar to like a phone, just always shown there. Now, behind the scenes, uh, you will now be using the Wahoo app as opposed to the Wahoo Element app. Uh, and when the Ace launched this past, you know, fall, that was kind of still in dumpster fire territory in terms of a connectivity to third party platforms like uh, Trainer Road, etc. At this point, though, I'd say it's relatively stabilized. I don't have any real issues there. However, one thing that may cause some people some uh, issues is the lack of status LEDs at the top. Uh, so it used to be in the past on the Roam and Bull computers, you had those status LEDs up there that could indicate various things like zones or churning, etc. Those are gone. Instead, that's now built into the display itself uh, in terms of uh, that same instructional information. I don't mind that. I know some people love the status LEDs and some people don't care. I kind of fall in the don't care camp, but you know, to each their own. Uh, lastly, you will see it is a slightly bigger unit, uh, both physically in terms of the dimensions, but also the weight. Uh, the weight on the Roam has increased from 93 grams to 108 grams, which is like the general trend for bike computers to get bigger and heavier. I mean, maybe a lot bigger and a lot heavier, but uh, most of them seem to be a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier over the last couple of years. And then finally, they've increased the claimed battery life from 17 hours to 25 hours. I want to really emphasize the claimed part of that particular spec. In the case of the Ace, uh, the claims they had there have been 
underwhelming in reality. I'm consistently getting about half to maybe two thirds of the claimed battery life uh, of the Ace on all of my rides. I'm hoping by the time we get to the final firmware of these units, uh, that will change, but that is going to be a key thing I'll be looking at going forward. Okay, so with that, let's then dive into the Bolt. Uh, now, effectively the Bolt is getting a lot of those same things. Here's the, the sheet right there. I won't run through that from a software standpoint. It's all the same software features as uh, the Ace and the Roam, except for the fact that it does not have that touchscreen uh, and it does not have that proper speaker, but it does still have the beeper for chirps and all that chirpy goodness. You will still get that. You see it's got a slightly larger screen than the past, 2.3 as opposed to 2.2 inch screen. Uh, and most notably, they added multi-band or dual frequency GPS that wasn't there on the Bolt V2, but now is there on the third gen version uh, versus the Rome actually did have that in the second gen version and of course sustains that into the third gen version. And as you see there, they've also increased the battery claim from 15 hours to 20 hours. Again, a super heavy emphasis on claimed uh, versus potentially reality. So more on that a little bit later on. Now, the big difference there with the Bolt is that it has no touchscreen. Uh, and you know, I was a bit concerned about that at first, but I will give them credit. Over the weekend, I got another beta software update that has improved that dramatically. At this point, I'm pretty pretty darn happy with the buttons on this. Uh, it's working really, really well. Uh, one of the challenges we saw back a couple years ago when Garmin released the Edge 840 and 540 together is that user interface was designed for touch, just like this user interface is 100% designed for touch on these larger units. And when they tried to move that down to the Edge 540 being button only, it was really, really rough for the first couple months or so. Uh, but you know, right now where this stands on the Bolt V3 uh, being button only, I'm really happy with this. This is a nice little unit. Now you may have noticed pricing wise, all of these have increased in price, basically 50 bucks more expensive uh, than their counterparts were in the past. Given all the situation over the last week, or longer, um, that actually isn't that bad. And I think it's roughly in line with what we would expect as consumers for pricing of these devices compared to devices that were released five years ago in some cases. That said, one of the areas I'm a little bit concerned about is the display side of it. Uh, you know, the display on the Ace is all right, but it is not great. It's just not an awesome display. It is a fine display, but it's nowhere near the levels of something like the, if I can fall, uh, not it the Edge uh, 1050 display. And I note that because while the Edge 1050 is Garmin's top end device and is a direct competitor to the Ace, uh, unquestionably at some point here in the future, we're probably gonna see a Garmin Edge 850 and a Garmin Edge 550. Garmin is very, very consistent in the release cycles and how they do that and how they trickle down things from upper end devices to lower end devices. So I would be very surprised if the screen technology is different in the 850 and 550 compared to the 1050 and the 1050 screen is of course absolutely brilliant it slaughters everything out there in the market today whereas these screens are kind of like yeah they're they're just so so in in my opinion they're not amazing they're not horrible they're just sort of like yeah so that could be a tricky thing for Wahoo going forward in the future, uh, depending on what Garmin does, whenever they do whatever they're gonna do. Instead, what Wahoo needs to focus on is their feature delivery and getting the bugs and the quirks out of their current kind of consistent platform. Uh, you know, they spent the last five months and I had to sit down with their CEO uh, just last week, talking about sort of that transition out of the ACE launch back in the you know, uh, December timeframe over the past five months. Uh, and they admitted they, they probably launched that a little bit too early and they've really spent these last last five months kind of cleaning up that that software mess if you will to the point where hopefully over the next few months they can start going forward on new features because realistically speaking there are almost no new software features on these units save for the uh, street names on the maps and some of the UI rearrangement there like the sensor pairing screen but in terms of like big ticket software features that typically drive consumer purchases of new devices especially devices that last a really long time uh, Wahoo doesn't have much of that right now uh, on these new devices until going forward over the next six, nine, 12, whatever months, they're gonna to have to focus a little bit more on driving compelling innovation and compelling features to get people to upgrade if that is indeed their goal. And of course, as a business uh, that sells hardware, their goal is going to have to be to get people to upgrade, especially since while he was basically saying their past devices are past devices now. You're not gonna be seeing any sort of meaningful feature updates on those past devices going forward. Instead, it'll be all about this product family here on this new platform going forward. In any case, these two devices go on sale on May 6th. So still basically about a month away here. Uh, and the reason for that gap, by the way, is simple. Wahoo has run out of stock of their other devices. So they still have Ace devices, of course, but uh, their existing Bolt and Roam devices are set to go out of stock. They just didn't manufacture enough. Hammerhead did the exact same thing a year ago with a 
they kind of had a gap there. That's why they announced now, but won't be available for four weeks. So people know that there is something new coming and maybe want to go ahead and get that new thing instead once it starts selling. Uh, so that'll be roughly about the time frame I drop my in-depth review uh, after I've had plenty more time on the final production firmware that should be out here next week that I can then spend a bunch of time diving into the details and how well things actually work. With that, thanks for watching and have a good one.